In this lecture, I'd like to talk about image restoration. Image restoration is a problem in image processing that deals with improving the visual quality of images. However, we have here we uh, already have studied image enhancement, which have similar similar goal. So, what is the difference between enhancement and restoration? Well, while both try to obtain a better image, the enhancement is a subjective method that is based on operations that would supposedly improve the image quality. So as we, we um, discussed it in the lectures about image enhancement, we performed, for, for example, a contrast um, modulation in an image with the hope that we will improve the image quality. We could also obtain a uh, histogram equalization with the same purpose or modifying the, um, the range of the dynamic range of intensity values by uh, performing a logarithm operator or a gamma adjustment. All of this is done, uh, is, um, is done in a handcrafted way. So we don't know exactly what the result will be it depends on uh, on the feeling of someone that is designing the enhancement and also it depends uh, on the image that we are um, trying to improve on the other hand in the restoration uh, problem um, we have an objective method that is based on prior prior knowledge that we have about the image de degradation model so it's not only to uh, select from um, a var a various tools and, and try and um, test and try one of by trial and error we try one of them and then we try to improve the the image quality in restoration we have some prior knowledge about the image degradation model and we use that knowledge in order to obtain a better image so for that to happen we are going to study two basic effects that um, that corrupt images and that we are going to try to uh, diminish in, in the process of restoration the first one is the blur so usually when the image is blurred it is uh, it's, it is not is the opposite of sharp so instead of having a sharp image with fine detail what we have is some blurry image with the details uh, harder to see in this case it is a uh, uh, astronomic image we could also have a, a specific type of blur uh, what is called a motion blur this is caused by uh, the, um, movement in either the object being imaged or the camera another degradation um, effect is noise uh, the noise is a corruption of the pixels that cause them not to be precise and we can also have a combination of both this is often the case in, in most um, images that are acquired we have blur and also noise in the image it could be um, a very low level of blur and noise but if you try to uh, photograph any scene and zoom the um, the original image uh, sufficiently you're going to see that actually there is some level of blur and there is also some level of noise so because image restoration is an objective method we have to deal with the problem formulation and the problem formulation usually takes this equation into account so we are going to consider that any image j of x and here x is a vector so it could be um, a uh, signal but also could be an image a 2d image and also a 3d image so it's a generic formulation in terms of the dimensionality of the the image so the observed image what we call also the degraded image is uh, an image 
um, g of x and this image g of x is formed by a process the first process is a convolution process so the image f of x would be an ideal image or the original image this is the image that we wanted to acquire in the first place but this image as it goes through the acquisition system it suffers a convolution with some function h of x which degrades it causing blur on the top of that on the top of, of the blur that is caused in this first process we also have a noise generation process in this case here is a statistical process so it is just a generic noise n but it could be an, a specific noise that we want to model and the most um, widely used model for the noise is the additive model this considers that instead of having a statistical process what we have instead is after the degradation caused by some function h which blurs the image we have or or corrupts the image in 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 a way that can be captured using a convolution we have an addition of a function n that allows uh, uh, allows us to interpret uh, how the noise is inserted in the image so this equation tries to capture the idea of an imaging system first the image is captured by a, a system for example a microscope a telescope a camera lens and then this is for uh, this is modeled by f convolution convolution with h so each system will have its own h function so it's a, it's a characteristic of the acquisition system so your uh, camera on your smartphone probably has a uh, function h that characterizes it but we can also have an h function for a satellite for a telescope or a microscope and so on and so forth the second process often is the um, electronic acquisi acquisition of this uh, of the image so after going through the lens system it is um, acquired or sensed by the uh, photon sensor the ccd or the cmos sensor and then uh, because of the electronic ac acquisition of the signal it generates additive noise so it adds noise on the top of the first acquisition uh, step so restorations restoration algorithms aim to achieve a restored image so it's a f hat that is as similar as possible to some original or ideal image f so in order to do that we have to use knowledge about the point spread function that is the name of this h function and the noise so if we know h and n if we know both of them then we can um, produce or, or we can compute the inverse of those operators so for example if we have a noise that is given by a sum we could subtract it and if we have a blur that is caused by a convolution we can perform the inverse convolution we are going to start by talking about sources of noise so how we how can we obtain a some knowledge some prior knowledge about noise commonly the source defines the way this the, the noise is um, observed most images has noise that, are, that is accumulated via some some steps of acquisition usually those steps are photo counting thermal quantization and transmission or display they may occur um, at the same time or they uh, one of them may occur in a more um, in, in a higher level than the other but all of them occur in some uh, in, in some level 
The most significant ones are probably the photo counting and the thermal noise. The photon counting is caused because light detection some, via some sensor is a statistical process. So it's basically um, a same uh, w when we are um, acquiring an image using a sensor, what we are doing is basically to sample a, um, a series of photons that come and reach the sensor. So it, this could be, um, there is a, um, um, uh, how can I say, some analogy, there is an analogy with the rain. So we could imagine that um, a sensor, a pixel that is uh, sensing light could be a bucket in, in the rain. So as we are trying to sample the uh, water that's coming down the, the, um, the air, so the, the sky, then the drop droplets of this, uh, of this water falls um, inside each bucket. So this tells us a little bit about the quality of, uh, of sensors. So sensors that, that are smaller, they are capable of acquiring less amount of photons due to its size. So a small pixel would probably uh, be able to capture much less um, photons in terms of the amount of photons than a large pixel. So this is, this is similar, uh, would be similar to, for example, um, in when it's raining, you go outside and then you put a glass and um, a proper bucket and a pool. So which one of them would um, capture the, uh, the, mo uh, the most significant volume of water? So of course, there is the one that has um, the larger area. Okay. So this light detection process is well modeled by a Poisson distribution in which the precision of this signal, the measured signal, is proportional to the mean of the signal in terms of the amount of photons. So the more we have, the more photons we have, the more precise uh, the measured signal is. So we can refer to it as the, um, in this case, to, we can approximate the amount of noise by the square root of the number of photons. That means if we have an image that um, have received a lot of photons, the proportion of noise in that pixel is smaller. So if we, for example, acquire it, and this is just a uh, illustration, okay? Uh, in practice, there are other issues, but this I'm doing a, a simplification here to explain. So if we acquire it, nine photons, say we have nine photons acquired. So the square root of that is three. So that means that one third of this uh, signal here is noise. When we go on and then we let, um, we, we could, for example, have a larger sensor, or we could also let the image to capture for a longer period of time. Then we would ac acquire more photons. If we have a proper illumination, then we could do that. We could, uh, or a fixed camera, then we, we increase the number of photons here. By increasing the number of photons, the time exposure, the exposure time, we also decrease the noise. And then for example, for um, 900 photons acquired, only 30 of uh, them is noise. And then we have uh, something roughly uh, to one over 30 of the signal that is corresponded to noise, so a much lower proportion. So this is why um, two cameras with the same pixel, so name same number of pixels, quantifies with, uh, with same pixel quantities, so the same size of uh, pixels, let's say 10 megapixels or uh, 6 megapixels, but different sensor size can result in different images. And I'd like to thank Roger Clark for having this um, experiments. So we 
she, um, he just imaged two um, two photos. One of them uh, has um, larger sensor than the other. So he just took those two photos. They have uh, they were acquired with the cameras and lenses with the same maker, same number of pixels, same ISO parameter, same aperture and shutter speed, but different sensors. So when when we observe them. And um, from the distance, it is not clear, but when we zoom out, so we have in on the top a uh, sensor with uh, larger pixel size. And on the bottom, we have a sensor with smaller pixel sizes. And it's clearly much noisier than the, the other one. So uh, it is around uh, four times. So on, on the bottom here we have each pixel is around 2.3 micron and on the top 8.2 micron however when we are imaging under extreme focal distances let's say small objects imaged at close distance uh, this for example happens in microscopy or large objects but imaged from far away uh, from uh, in telescopes in astronomic images then when we use smaller pixels we have um, we it allows us to capture better fine details so this is this could be um, something that is against the the common sense but it happens because we are working under extreme focal distance so let's say we are imaging uh, um, a planet that's so far away that we, if we have a, a pixel that is too large it will um, it will capture uh, photons that come from different objects so when we um, have a smaller pixel then I have a better chance of having a sharper image so each pixel will still have lower amounts of photons even though we have a sharper image it will be noisier than uh, one with um, a uh, larger pixel size so smaller pixels allow to observe more details paying the cost of a lower signal to noise ratio per pixel so this is a very common term signal to noise that uh, it is a ratio between the amount of signal and the amount of noise in some uh, generic signal or image so the higher the signal to noise ratio the better so this is an example of imaging the moon with different size of um, pixel pitch from the 8.5 micron to 4.3 micron then we you can download the slides and then zoom out to um, check it out so those um, sparse images with low exposure time has noise characterized by Poisson distribution examples are astronomic images and microscopic images in this case in the case of photon counting the noise is signal dependent so it's correlated with the signal and then the image formation is given by F convoluted with H and then we have a Poisson process on the top of that but when images are acquired with good illumination conditions or adequate exposure and we, no we don't have an extreme um, focal scenario this counting noise is often low and can be neglected or approximated using a normal distribution so as we have a parameter of the Poisson distribution lambda higher and higher then we can approximate it using a normal distribution with mean and standard deviation equal to this value of lambda then it practically became a, a normal distributed um, data. So here is an example of photon counting. So those two were 
acquired on, on under similar condition bond but on the right hand side we have a um, poor poorer illumination in this case a lower um, exposure time so when we approximate or zoom it out we can see that there is much noise much more noise in the right hand side but because the uh, noise is correlated it is not added to the image when we have a black pixel it will still be a black pixel okay because we we have zero um photons here we have uh, sino uh, with zero uh, value so the square root of zero is still zero so we don't have anything added on the top of that another source of noise is the thermal noise it is often caused by electrons that are generated when the photons are detected on the sensor because the amount of electrons vary given the temperature of the sensor we we observe a fluctuation on the the number of photons so even though we have a fixed amount of photons coming uh, to to the sensor we will observe a, a variation or a dispersion of this value of this uh, value a long time usually when we assume that we have this type of noise we can model it by using a normal or gaussian distribution and an additive process um, in many cases we have what we call white noise that means that the variance is equal to one so the noise is often independent of the signal and then the image formation is given by this equation here so i don't have a uh, Poisson process anymore we have just an addition of some noise a possible way to diminish the effect of thermal noise is using what is called a dark frame capture this consists of basically um, acquiring an image with a sensor by just um, using a cap to prevent the, the camera to capture any light from the outside so we basically we put a cap or some um, blocking in, in the camera so in the lens so it, do, it doesn't uh, uh, capture any light from the outside then we capture it we capture the image so any uh, values that are uh, that appear on the image are just electrons that that are generated by the sensor not from light source and we have uh, two examples from uh, this is an image that as a, is attached to a telescope and on the right hand side an image that is attached to a uh, sorry um, a camera from a smartphone so this is a, this is an old smartphone something like uh, eight years ago or so uh, and this is a camera attached to, to a telescope and then um, we nor uh, I normalize the levels here so those are not uh, original ones so I just got um, normalize the maximum value to be 255 so we can see it otherwise it would just appear as black so after some uh, period working with the lens we then capture this dark frame and then we can use it to subtract from acquired images another source of noise is quantization that is a noise caused by when we reduce the number of possible values of pixels when we work with gray levels we often use 8 bit per pixel that means we have 200 and 56 different values so when we quantize the image to this amount of levels we have some noise that is caused by the approximation of the the range of values it often follows some uh, uh, an uniform distribution and the quant when the quantization it, it is um, uh, also independent of the signal 
but when the quantization level is too low, the noise can become signal dependent and then correlated with it, each region of the image and become non-uniform. Let's see an example here. I just got a, an image here with the, its original 256 levels of gray um, of intensity and then I reduce this to 64 levels. So it, um, on the first glance, it appears to be very similar. However, when we subtract one from the other, we can see um, the values that we lose in this process, and then we have the quantization noise here. So it's uh, roughly uniform, but because I, I decrease it four times the, the, um, the number of values, it, it is starting to become dependent of the region. Often brighter regions have more noise in this case. Also, there is a noise that is caused by a failure in transmission or a failure in display. This is often the case when we have errors in some bits when storing or transmitting this image. The resulting noise is, refer is referred to as impulsive or, or also salt and pepper. Um, this is basically when we lose some, some pixel. So we, we lose all the values of the pixel. And because we lose this, this, um, this pixel, it becomes either a black pixel, 0, or a white pixel, 255. So this noise often does not affect all pixels, so just a, a small number of pixels are affected by this kind of noise. However, the ones that are affected are completely destroyed. So this is an image, on the, the left hand side we have an image, and the, on the right hand side I just simulated salt and pepper noise over this salt and pepper image. I know, um, it's a bad joke. But anyway, we can see here, if we zoom out, let me do it for you. So if we zoom it out, so only uh, a, a small amount of pixels is, in this case I, I exaggerated a bit to show, but not all pixels are affected by noise. The, the ones that are not affected are completely perfect. However, the ones that are affected by this noise is, are, are uh, completely changed and then they become either black, so those, those black dots here, or white. So this um, can be represented mathematically using two impulses or two Dirac functions in 0, black, and 255, white. So a random pixel has a probability P of being affected by noise, usually half of this probability for salt and half for pepper, but it could be different.